Yes, thank you, Jad. My voice is clear. Yes, uh, we can hear you well. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, hello everyone, and welcome to this webinar Preserve the Classifications and Estimation Techniques. I'm Hisham Mukhtar Senior Reservoir Engineer. It's January 7, 2021, 20, and this is the first ever webinar in this new year. So I'm hoping this year will bring all happiness and success for all of you and it will mark the end of COVID-19 throughout the world. Right now, uh, please your attention. Uh, let's start directly with our agenda today. I will start with agenda introduction. What is the uh, Petroleum Resources Management System, BRS definitions, uh, classifications, and terminology? Difference between deterministic and stochastic reserve estimation approach, and then different estimation techniques, starting with volumetric technique. Uh, after that, deploying Kiva analysis in its two approaches, uh, conventional and advanced approach, uh, approach using Shlomo J oil field manager of M. After that, the uh, static or conventional material balance applications for reserve estimation, and then the uh, straight line fall or have been under the material balance approach and the applications of MBAL, IBM MBAL software in reserve estimation and then the dynamic of flowing material balance uh, definitions and approach and finally in this webinar what is uh, the rate transient analysis RTE and its applications for reserve estimations using uh, a software So at the beginning, I'd like to define what is the uh, reservoir engineering RE. Basically, it's a branch of petroleum engineering that's uh, concerned with the applications of flow to flow in porous media in the subsurface reservoir during production and development phases. The uh, main uh, objective for this uh, segment of petroleum engineering is to achieve the ultimate economic recovery for the uh, reservoir we have. So basically for uh, reservoir engineering applications, we, uh, we have uh, three main concepts or three main fundamentals. As you can see, we have this uh, field uh, and we have this uh, subsurface reservoir. We have uh, rock matrix and bore spaces and uh, in between we have reservoir float. Therefore, the first and the basic concept for R is the dust law of flow rate equation because we have a fluid flow in a porous media. Second and the most important approach is the continuity or material balance approach because we have a specific subsurface volume or uh, storage or reserve, which is the concern of this webinar. Therefore, the remaining volume will be the initial volume minus the reduced volume. <clears throat> the last one is the equation of a state uh, or DVT model because the fluid properties like oil formation volume factor, oil density, oil viscosity are typically dependent of pressure. Uh, during production, the fluid, the uh, reservoir fluid, uh, we have declined in pressure from the average reservoir pressure to bottom hole flowing pressure and then the well head pressure. Therefore, we have to integrate a question of a state model to characterize fluids while production, while production process. As you can see, for complete system analysis, we have to integrate IBR or inflow and outflow, or in other words, VLB model. And this is the, uh, as you can see, the concept for uh, different or uh, typically uh, all reservoir engineering applications, including reservoir simulation. At first, uh, the term reserve by, de by definition means something kept for the uh, future needs or specific, specific variables. 
for the bank of the reserve is the capital return to meet the probable future demands. For oil and gas operators, the term reserve means uh, the subsurface volume of crude oil or other hydrocarbon products that can be recovered under existing economic and operating conditions. By integrating a specific economic model, which means uh, we have uh, certain capex, uh, obex, and oil prices, we can convert the uh, subsurface volume to an equivalent value or net present value at certain discount rate. Therefore, the term reserve finally means the value or net present value of the hydrocarbon uh, product we have in the subsurface reservoirs. Why it's important to the uh, reserve uh, definitions? Because all the parameters involved in reserve calculations, including engineering and geological parameters, in, contain inherent uncertainty. We typically have two different types of uncertainty. Physical, the first one is physical uncertainty, which is related to the subsurface reservoir, reservoir heterogeneity, reservoir extension, driving mechanism, and so on. The second type of uncertainty is the commercial uncertainty. Typically related to CAPEX, OPEX, and prices. CAPEX simply means the uh, cost for exploration and production. OPEX is the cost for uh, uh, processing transportation. Uh, while the prices is the market value of the hydrocarbon product we have in the subsurface reservoirs. So it's important to set uh, standard definitions for reserve to quantify all inherent uncertainty, including physical and commercial uncertainties. Why reserve estimates? Because different segments are, in, are interested in uh, oil and gas reserve, including oil and gas operators, uh, banks and investors, uh, governmental taxation and regulations authorities. Also, uh, the uh, value of reserve or amount of uh, the reserve we have will will be an important factor to set and size uh, the uh, facilities for production and processing, as assigning the field development plans to establish the future production profiles, and finally identify the key uncertainties involved in our estimations. As you can see, the oil and gas industry is one of the most important industries um, throughout the other industries, uh, different interests for the oil and gas companies, which is the, uh, the, uh, they need to maximize the return or the uh, economic benefits of the project by maximizing the net present value. For go governmental uh, services or governmental resources management services, they need to maximize recovery maximize the uh, economic benefits like royalties and taxes. For the public sector, oil and gas industry is important for the sector because they are interested to maximize the economic benefits like the number of jobs, uh, the uh, cheap energy prices, and finally, it's important to minimize the environmental impacts of this of oil and gas operators worldwide. Global reserve figures, we typically have different sources for global reserve figures like maybe any uh, organization of petroleum exporting uh, countries, OPEC, US, EIA. In this uh, webinar, I'd like to highlight the statistical review of solid energy, as you can see. It's one of the uh, widely used uh, resources for these global reserve figures. It's an annual publication of the Sober Major British Petroleum BB that recording the global uh, events by year in terms of oil reserve, oil production, natural gas reserve, energy consumptions, uh, renewable energy, and different sources for statistical analysis uh, worldwide. 
As you can see, this is a snapshot of the statistical view of solid energy. We have total proved reserve in this report. We have total proved reserve by country, as you can see, and by different geographical regions like North America, uh, Europe, uh, Middle East, and so on. We have total uh, proved reserve at end 1997, 2007, and 2017. In this report, you will find this new total proved reserve is typically the quantities that geological engineering data shows was reasonable certainty that can be recovered under existing and the economic conditions. Typically, this is the uh, definitions of the board or reserve. Another insight from the, uh, this report is the global distribution of proved oil reserve. In 1998, we uh, have almost 1140 billion barrels globally, and this is the distribution for the different ge geographical areas. As you can see, uh, the Middle East is typically has 60% uh, of the global proved reserve. In 2008, we have almost 1495 uh, billion bars. And 2018, we have 1730 billion bars. One of the important notes right here is the uh, Middle East is still in this period from 1998 to 2018, still has almost 50% of the global proved reserve. Another insight right here is the significant increase in proved oil reserve of Central and South America from 2008 to in the period uh, 2008 to uh, 2018, from 13 to uh, about 19 percent. That's uh, because the huge discoveries of Venezuela discovered in this period. Uh, the term resources uh, to resources uh, at the beginning is, is uh, the oil quantities of hydrocarbon we have in subsurface reservoirs that may be discovered or undiscovered, recoverable or unrecoverable, conventional or unconventional, but uh, we uh, may uh, have different uh, future conditions uh, in uh, technology prices or even uh, governmental regulations. While the reserve are estimated quantities of hydrocarbon we have in subsurface accumulations that can be recovered economically under existing conditions for a given date forward under current uh, governmental regulations and contract terms and the conditions. So uh, BRMS. BRMS is the uh, Petroleum Resources Management System, which is the oil and gas industry global standard for reserve classifications, definitions, and reporting. Uh, this uh, system is prepared by SBEB uh, OGRC Oil and Gas Reserve Committee, approved in March 2007. And it's a set of definitions, uh, guidelines, and terminology to uh, define a global technical standard for reserve classifications and reporting. As you can see, this is the uh, BRMS front page of this report, uh, revised edition June 2018. So this system uh, provides a consistent approach for definitions and calculations of reserve. And in the same time, provide means of comparison between different projects worldwide because uh, the technical and the commercial parameters are involved in this uh, report in this system. So uh, different companies, global uh, oil and gas operators use BRMS as a reference for reserve classifications and calculations. As you can see, this is the uh, classification framework of BRMS. On the x-axis, we have different categories based on the uncertainty of the quantities 
we uh, we can uh, get from the applied project on the vertical axis we have different classifications based on the chance of commerciality of the applied project as you can see we have uh, this uh, total uh, classifications are the total petroleum initially in place that's uh, classified into two main uh, parts undiscovered and discovered one in the top most commerciality of the uh, discovered petroleum initially in place we have uh, reserves and uh, by definition we have uh, kiln production right here which means uh, they are already recovered and measured while the uh, reserves are estimated uh, parameters so as you can see we have in uh, we have different uncertainty levels from uh, for uh, reserve we have proved probable and possible reserve we have just uh, one b which which, uh, which is equal uh, proved to be equals uh, proved plus proven 3b equals proved plus probable plus possible reserve the second classification which is sub commercial part of the uh, discovered petroleum initially in place is the contingent resources so conting contingent resources are the uh, discovered board of petroleum initially in place that's any uh, uh, usually considered uncom uncommercial at certain uh, at the current condition while the prospective resources are the undiscovered part of petroleum initially in place that's uh, related to the chance of uh, geological discovery and the chance of uh, uh, project development so a reserve must, uh, must uh, follow the uh, forming criteria must be discovered commercial recoverable and remaining contingent resources uh, uh, that lack the maturity of the uh, project development, prospective resources related mainly to the geological uh, chance of discovery. Main principles of PRMS, uh, this system is typically uh, applicable to uh, both conventional and unconventional resources. It's uh, project-based project based means we uh, must have a specific project uh, to recover we subsurface uh, reserves we have and this uh, this project must be commercial in terms of the uh, economic model we have classification is based on the project chance of commerciality categories in brms are based in the uh, recoverable uncertainty and the most important is estimates are based on deterministic or uh, stochastic or probabilistic reserve uh, estimation approaches. What does it mean by project based? We uh, typically have three main components so in our system. We have the property or, or the uh, license or contract terms we have as operator or oil and gas company. We have subsurface reservoir, subsurface accumulation, and we have a, a specific project, which means we have set of wells where with the uh, corresponding uh, surface processing and transportation facilities. For every for every project, we have a specific field development plans, unique production profile, and using a specific. Uh, economic model every project uh, will have a project recovery efficiency which is the ratio of uh, EOR estimated ultimate recovery to the uh, petroleum initially in place the widely used this uh, uncertainty terminology in reserve uh, calculations and the classifications are as you can see uh, B90 which means we have uh, the reserve at 90 percent probability or low estimate or proved reserve or in other words one b reserve second one is the best estimate or b50 the reserve at 50 percent probability 
which is equivalent to a 2B reserved category uh, related to proved plus probable reserve. And last one, or high estimate reserve B10, uh, the reserve at 10% probability equivalent to 3B proved plus probable plus possible values. We typically have two different approaches for reserve estimation. The deterministic approach, which is uh, in this case, we have single value of the parameter of the input parameter in reserve calculations. The parameter are typically geological and engineering data. This approach is typically known as three point estimate. Second one is the stochastic or probabilistic approach. In this approach, we, uh, we use a full range of the input parameter engineering and geological data with the corresponding uh, probability and the corresponding distribution. As you can see, in, uh, this is the deterministic or three point estimate. We have at this point, Fume production, which is already recovered and measured. So this is uh, high, the highest probability level. After that, we have proved probable and possible reserve. And in this, we have increased in EOR or estimated ultimate recovery. This, the first scenario is 1B scenario equivalent to proved reserve. 2B scenario, uh, more likely than not which is proved plus probable. The last one, 3D scenario, proved plus probable plus possible reserve. On the other hand, uh, stochastic reserve estimate, we have this uh, probability distribution. At 100% uh, uh, probability, we have fume production, as you can see in this x-axis. And in y, we have uh, the percentage of probability. At the QM production will uh, typically have 100% uh, probability. And then at 90% in this, as you can see, if we get 90% at this, uh, this curve, we will have B90 or the reserve at 90% probability. At 50% we'll find B50 and 10% will get B10. Simply the uh, stochastic reserve estimate, as you can see, we can, uh, we may have these uh, different distribution of the input parameters in reserve calculations, like uh, rock, uh, rock volume, uh, porosity, connect water, water saturation, oil formation, volume factor, recovery factors, and so on. Every single parameter will have a unique uh, distribution like this. And finally, we will find something equivalent to this, this distribution to get B90, B50, and B10. BRMS is typically used in different global, uh, reserve, global reserve classifications and reporting. As you can see, this is a reserve, a visa report for Asram Bergotti in for Metal Production, Egypt. In this front page of this report, as you can see, we have BRMS case. In this report, uh, this is a shot from this. Uh, we have set of definitions, classifications, and calculations to get volumes or subsurface volumes, uh, like proved, probable, and possible reserve. The second part of this report contains the economic model which is our economic model, which is equivalent to uh, cost, capex, obex, taxes, oil prices according to uh, the uh, expected future uh, oil prices. And using specific economic model, at certain discount rate, we will find the uh, net present value of the uh, reserves we have. So finally, in this report, you can find the values of different categories of approved, probable, and the possible reason. This is a field exam for, uh, for South Sioux concession in the uh, Eastern Desert, in the uh, Nile Delta from Egypt. 
uh, this report is, uh, as you can see, we have four uh, reserve summary, four developed, four and developed, probable and possible the uh, gross field gas reserve in billion standard cubic feet, as you can see. We have this calculations and reserve estimation. By using a specific economic model, uh, we, as you can see, we have the net present value summary for the approved probable and the possible reserve at certain discount rate to convert the future values of future cash flow to the equivalent net present value. So if you remember the uh, reserve definition is finally, I mean, the, uh, the net present value of the uh, hydrocarbon project, uh, hydrocarbon product we have. This is a detailed overview of this uh, field example. As you can see, we have uh, different uh, metaphysical parameters used in the uh, calculations using a Monte Carlo simulation to generate the range of uncertainty for every single parameter. We will create something similar like this. For every parameter like gross work volume, formation volume factor, net gross velocity uh, and hydrocarbon saturation, we have a specific distribution and equivalent B90, B50, and B10. So finally, we'll find gas initially in place in billion cubic foot, uh, B90, B50, and B10. As you can see, uh, low estimate, best estimate, and B10 is high estimate because we uh, estimate the high, higher value of the uh, gas reserve at 10% probability, while B50 is, uh, is the best estimate, uh, uh, which is uh, about 12 billion cubic foot at 50% probability. And as you can see, this is the structure made on uh, the top of Abomar deformation from South Concession and the uh, biophysical data are is typically uh, derived from the uh, well logging interpretation of the uh, the field uh, wells so uh, the first category in the uh, reserve is the proved reserve proved reserve is typically the uh, quantity of petroleum that can be recovered under uh, with reasonable certainty under existing and the economic condition and under government governmental regulations uh, you have to keep in mind the uh, the classification of the approved reserve in this case the processing and transportation facilities to the market must be uh, operational proved reserve is, uh, can is classified to developed and undeveloped, the, uh, the high degree of uncertainty or high degree of confidence means we have supported in, uh, geological and engineering data, actual uh, more accurate data. We have validation of the assumptions used in the uh, calculation uh, process. So uh, the proof the reserve for, uh, we must have a commercial production or actual formation test. For the approved reserve, also we have to uh, have a clear hydrocarbon water contact, or at least we have to uh, add the area of the approved reserve to the lowest known hydrocarbon, as you can see. We have this oil, uh, we have oil gradient without clear oil water contact at this point but we have all down to level. So the improved reserve calculations, the area must be limited to the uh, oil down to level uh, until we have a more update in our data and we have a clear oil water contact. Two main uh, different uh, classifications of the improved, improved developed, developed means this reserve covered from the existing uh, wells uh, is classified to producing or non-producing. Producing is the uh, it's recoverable from the current open completions or open perforation intervals, while non-producing 
is uh, through different classifications. Shotting means we have open completions, open duration, duration intervals, but the uh, while waiting installing the production and uh, production facilities behind the pipe the, that's require additional completion or uh, completion operation for all future recompletion to uh, define this part as uh, uh, as developed number use this is an example from the gulf of Suez, egypt we have this uh, testing data you see in the reservoir. This well is currently shut in, awaiting the production facility installment. So according to BRMS guidelines, the, this reserve calculation based on this well uh, testing data can be categorized as uh, proved because we have actual uh, formation test. Developed because we have an existing well number reducing because this well is shut in uh, because we are waiting the installation of the production facility and the final uh, category is uh, shut in non reducing shut in because we have open completions or open definition intervals probable reserve is uh, this part is less certain than the proved reserve uh, maybe uh, may include the uh, area uh, anticipated to be approved by a uh, normal step out drilling or as you can see uh, area geologically separated by the uh, by a faulting like this uh, and structure and higher in structure than the approved area so the uh, the this area can be classified as probable reserve while in this area we have uh, a specific uh, well with specific uh, testing data and this area is classified as proved. Possible reserve is typically uh, less certain than probable reserve. We have a uh, low degree of certainty and as you can see we uh, the probable is uh, typically located in another structure separated from the proved reserve and lower in structure than the approved so uh, the area in the uh, this lower structure by this normal faulting is classified as possible reserve it's important to know we have different project maturity subclasses according to brms we have uh, total petroleum initially in place if you remember discovered and undiscovered board we have reserves, contingent resources, and prospective resources. According to the chance of commerciality for the prospective resources, the term prospect. This term is a very important term, and it's the most commercial part of the prospective resources. It's uh, the uh, potential uh, accumulations of uh, good for uh, is a good candidate for uh, drilling next to drilling operations or a specific trap can be identified by uh, seismic uh, processing and seismic interpretation so the uh, prospect is very important so uh, it's the most commercial part of the prospective resources in the uh, second section of this webinar, different will highlight different reserve estimation techniques. Typically, uh, we have different techniques. Uh, the first one is the analogy, uh, typically used in the uh, before drilling phase. We can uh, get uh, data from other fields or similar fields like uh, BBT data or recovery factors. Second one is the volumetric approach. In, uh, in case of uh, exploration and appraisal phase of our field. Last, last one is the performance, which is typically uh, dependent on uh, production data, flowing pressure and flow rate, like decline curve analysis, material balance, red transient analysis, and finally reservoir simulation. The first, uh, first technique in this uh, calculation, Z calculation techniques, is a volumetric approach. I 
I think all of you are aware of this equation, volumetric equation for oil reserve uh, N or uh, oil in place or store. Uh, typically, function of H and phi, SWI, and uh, B sub O initial or oil formation volume factor, initial oil formation volume factor. The unit of this equation in, in stock tank barrel. So the original oil reserve will be uh, N times the assigned recovery factor and the original solution gas in place is N times the initial solution gas in place. Typically the uh, initial oil formation volume factor is used to uh, convert the uh, subsurface volumes to equivalent, uh, to equivalent surface uh, volumes in a stock tank valve. This is on the field example of the volumetric calculations. We have a specific reservoir, oil reservoir with the corresponding bit of physical uh, analysis, as you can see. Uh, for uh, calculations, areas taken till oil uh, water contact, we have in this field clear oil water contact, but a physical parameter from this interpretation, log interpretation. Oil uh, BVT data initially estimated by uh, analogy from a similar field, and then the uh, BVT data are updated using a valid BVT study. By applying the volumetric equation, as you can see, we had area net bay uh, porosity, SWI oil formation volume factor, and we have a corresponding uh, oil in place N or STOI in. Uh, M million stock tank barrel and the corresponding original oil reserve at 18% recovery factor. Similarly, for uh, gas uh, volumetric uh, reserve or gas initially in place or uh, G, we have a similar equation like uh, volumetric equation of oil. But uh, keep in mind, in this, if you use this equation in units of stock tank barrel, you have to calculate oil formation volume factor using this equation. B sub G is typically a function of the permissibility factor, pressure and temperature. And for uh, more for units for gas in place, uh, like standard cubic feet, this equation is commonly used. But in this case, we have to calculate oil formation volume factor using this equation in units of uh, reservoir cubic foot, the standard cubic foot. So the original gas reserve is G times the recovery factor. Uh, the most important parameter for this cal uh, gas reserve calculation is G factor. If you have a specific uh, BVT study for, for uh, gas or gas condensate, uh, or uh, gas condensate sample, we have this typical uh, relationship for Z factor versus pressure. We can uh, fit this uh, equation using polynomial equations and use the uh, and calculate Z factor at any pressure you have you want to calculate. Second group of the estimation techniques are the performance based techniques. Typically related to the production data, production pressure, uh, production rate, and the flowing pressure. The first approach is the flying curve analysis. It's the, uh, an important reservoir engineering approach. Typically, uh, the approach, the uh, concept of this approach is to match the past performance of the well or even the entire reservoir using a specific model like Argus equation to uh, predict the future performance and calculate the reserve and finally uh, get the estimated ultimate recovery EUR. So as you can see we have this uh, actual production data or, or historical production for gas, gas rate versus uh, QM production. We uh, will fit this trend to get EUR or estimated ultimate recovery. The main factors that will change the production profile for a specific way, a specific well, or even the entire reservoir, any field operation like drilling, recombination, or work over operations, decrease on bottom of flowing pressure, starting 
Last one is starting secondary or tertiary recovery programs. Uh, the first uh, type of the uh, decline analysis is the conventional uh, decline curve analysis, or in other words, the empirical R equation. R equation is typically important uh, RE approach uh, empirical equation to uh, predict the uh, fluid. Q at any time T as a function of initial rate and uh, hyperbolic exponent T and initial instantaneous decline with DI and uh, at any time T. Also, we have three different forms for this equation based on the uh, value of hyperbolic exponent T, hyperbolic exponential and harmonic equation B from a range from zero to one for hyperbolic decline. For exponential, uh, B is zero for harmonic. The value of hyperbolic exponent is one. What is the main assumptions for our equation is the, uh, uh, this equation is considering the well is producing at constant flow rate. Therefore, it's only applicable to boundary dominated flow. Let me uh, discuss this uh, point as you can see from this animation. As you can, uh, as you can see, uh, assuming we have a vertical uh, well in the center of circular homogeneous reservoir. So before starting production as the initial conditions, the pressure throughout the reservoir is constant at the initial reservoir pressure. Once we start the production, the, uh, we will create a pressure transient like this, as you can see in this uh, blue colored circle. We uh, will create a pressure transient. This pressure transient will move in reservoir based on the reservoir characteristics like reservoir permeability and the fluid viscosity and so on. As long as this pressure transient doesn't reach the reservoir boundary in this uh, red color circle, Therefore, the, uh, we, uh, the uh, conditions, the flow condition is the transient flow, transient flow conditions. Once the pressure transient has reached the reservoir boundaries, so in this case, we have pseudo state flow conditions or boundary dominated flow. So our equation is only applicable for the boundary dominated flow because in this condition, the, uh, the average reservoir pressure will decline throughout the entire reservoir at a constant rate. Therefore, the pressure at any point in the reservoir will be uh, similar to the value recorded at uh, the bottom of the well. As you can see, we have different uh, decline analysis uh, plots uh, we simply have for any well or any reservoir, we simply have uh, the relationship of rate, oil rate versus time uh, with the three different forms, exponential, hyperbolic, and harmonic in uh, this uh, three different curves. If we plot this data on similar plots, similar grade versus time, as you can see, the exponential decline will uh, get the straight line in the, this, uh, as you can see in this green color. Also, uh, if we plot uh, oil rate versus Q production, uh, exponential decline will uh, uh, introduce another straight line, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, at any time in X axis, at any time uh, you will find the exponential decline predict the lowest lowest value of uh, oil rate, which means it's a conservative approach for reserve calculations and reserve estimation. Therefore, the exponential approach is uh, widely used because in using this approach, we are predicting the lowest expected oil rate. Uh, we are following a conservative approach uh, because the expected values are less than the uh, hyperbolic or even less than the, the harmonic expected flow rates. 
Exponential decline is also uh, known as uh, CBD or constant percentage decline because we have a straight line, so the uh, decline rate is constant. Uh, if we uh, use uh, the value of P as zero, so we will have this relationship of Argus equation. And finally, the uh, QM production at abundant or estimated ultimate recovery will be QI, the initial rate minus Q abundant over DI or decline rate, initial decline. The second, second part of the uh, decline curve analysis, the advanced decline analysis of the Tovich approach, simply because our equation is uh, only applicable during boundary dominated flow. So the Tovich used analytical flow equations to in dimensionless form to develop five curves, as you can see. Uh, integrated with Arvis empirical approach to uh, analyze the entire uh, period of our oil uh, production. So in uh, using the which approach, we will analyze our oil during the uh, transient and boundary dominated flow period. So similarly, uh, the Kovic type curves are dimensionless, as you can see, dimensionless rate versus dimensionless time. We have two parts of this uh, type curve, the first one, the uh, during the uh, transient flow conditions we have analytical or constant pressure solution we have different set of uh, curves typically dependent of rd or the uh, dimensionless uh, drainage radius the second family or second part of this uh, type curve of uh, the coverage is the late uh, late time flow period or boundary dominated flow period uh, we have different type of curves uh, that are function of the value of B from zero to one, similarly like the Arvis equation. So the main applications of the bridge type curves, the reservoir uh, parameters like uh, skin, reservoir mobility, and uh, estimated ultimate recovery or oil reserve. Uh, this reserve, we, we added the uh, QM production uh, with the uh, Petkovic type curve. The QM type curves are not uh, available in soft, uh, not available in software like uh, oil field manager OFM. We will highlight this point while discussing uh, applications of OFM. So again, similarly, uh, the uh, Petkovic approach is uh, we have a analytical or constant flowing pressure to generate a set of curves integrated with the empirical Arvis equation of plots from exponential to harmonic and plotting, we plotting this uh, data on log log plots. Finally, we will, uh, we will uh, generate the Kupich type curves as you can see like this. Right now, uh, we'll highlight applications of the oil field monitor OFM for reserve calculations. OFM is uh, typically uh, software uh, widely used for reservoir surveillance, production analysis, and reservoir management. It's an integrated tool for uh, mapping and trending the production data, production uh, performance analysis, and uh, which is our focus in this webinar reserve estimation by decline curve analysis, uh, ARVS and the Twitch. Often decline analysis terminology, as you can see, we have uh, this uh, production history for a well or even the entire reservoir. So at this point, we have, this is the uh, end of our history. We have QM production, QM oil production, or NV. And after that, we have the prediction for the uh, oil rate versus time. This prediction, so uh, uh, using the decline curve analysis like empirical approach uh, or Arvis equation, we can uh, match the past performance, uh, as you can see, using this straight line or exponential decline to predict the future performance and calculate the reserve. And finally, 
get the AOR or estimated ultimate recovery. So as you can see in this legend from uh, of M, we have working uh, parameter for this forecast. B value is zero, which means we have exponential decline, and B I Q I and P I for our estimate. At the end of our history uh, in 2017, as you can see at this point, we have Q1 production while the remaining reserve is uh, almost 100, uh, 196,000 barrels at the uh, end of November 2028. The, Therefore, at this point, we have about uh, 10 years forecast of 10 years prediction for the oil rate. So the estimated ultimate recovery EOR will be Q production plus the remaining reserve. In OFM, you will find empirical solution using our equation and uh, analysis using the pitch type here. The software, as you can see, uh, typically plots the production data versus time on the dimensionless type curve of Bitkovich. And we uh, will get the reservoir parameters using early time calculations from this uh, region, like a skin and the reservoir vulnerability. And for late time calculations, we uh, will get the uh, value of reserve and estimated ultimate recovery. Also, of M uh, shows different capabilities, like uh, you can save your forecast, you, and you can make several oil schedules equivalent to uh, different prediction scenarios, B, like B90 low uh, estimate, B50 and B10. Uh, B90, uh, the reserve at 90% probability and so on. Another application uh, for uh, the Kubitsch type curve is to identify the uh, correct or the proper value of, of uh, hyperbolic exponent P. As mentioned, we uh, typically use the exponential decline because we uh, are expecting uh, more conservative values for the oil production and accordingly uh, more conservative uh, oil reserve and estimated ultimate recovery. However, we can use all uh, the Bitkovich type curve to identify the uh, correct value or the proper value of hyperbolic exponent B, as you can see in this field example. The uh, data typically shows we have uh, B higher than zero, so we can use this value in our uh, analysis using Arbus equation, as you can see. The uh, uh, correct value of B is uh, 0.25, uh, not the uh, value of zero or exponential decline. The second uh, technique used for reserve estimation is material balance analysis. Uh, the material balance is an important analytical reservoir engineering approach. It's a uh, relationship between the uh, reservoir of volume, reservoir pressure, and the fume production. As you can see, we have this, uh, this field, we have a set of wells, we have uh, production uh, oil producers, we, have, we may have gas injectors, and, and we may have uh, water injector. So uh, the material balance will relate, all of them will relate the uh, reservoir of volume, reservoir pressure and Q production to predict the uh, uh, value of reserve. Main, the main requirements for material balance analysis are uh, production data, accurate production data for oil, water, and gas, accurate determination of average reservoir pressure, and the BVT data uh, for oil and gas, and rock compressibility. Applications of material balance is the determination of uh, oil in place or gas in place, N and G. Determination of water influx, WE, or the uh, gas cap volume, M, and other parameters like the uh, drive 
production active, the active driving mechanism in our uh, field. So again, uh, the concept of material balance is the the uh, total change of reservoir log volume will be the change in reservoir uh, gas volume plus oil volume plus water volume. So the initial stage, we have uh, initial reservoir uh, pressure without uh, production. Once we start production, we have fume oil production in the week, fume gas production, fume water. And if we have a water uh, aquifer, so we will find water influx WE. So the final stage of the our field, we will uh, have it changes in reservoir volume and accordingly it changes in oil, water, and the gas saturation with time. But uh, you have to keep in mind the main assumptions of material balance analysis are uh, the material balance equation is typically a zero dimensional model or tank model, which means the uh, reservoir is considered as point. Uh, or uh, this means also we have a, a uniform reservoir characteristics like reservoir uh, velocity, uh, thickness, reservoir uh, distribution. And finally, we, uh, we assume, are assuming we have a pressure equi equilibrium or pressure stabilization throughout the entire reservoir. So uh, to simplify the general form of the material balance equation, uh, the concept is uh, total withdrawal or total production in uh, reservoir volume of oil, water, and gas production equals the expansion of oil and liberated gas. To simplify this, uh, if we consider the total uh, withdrawal or total production, we have in V, which is uh, fume oil production times uh, B sub O. This, the units of this term will be reservoir direct, and so on for uh, solution gas and water production. For oil expansion, for example, we have N, which is uh, our interest or the uh, oil in place or uh, oil reserve times this term so N is the initial oil or uh, oil in place, and this term is net oil expansion. So simply, uh, material balance equation is uh, withdrawal equals expansion. Similarly, like gas gas expansion, water uh, expansion, and both volume compressibility, and if we have a water aquifer, so we have water influx uh, WE times P sub O oil formation volume factor of water. Also, it's important to know uh, the uh, delta B uh, average is the uh, BI, the initial minus average reservoir uh, pressure. Uh, to keep in mind the simplest form of the material balance equation, we are considering the following assumptions. Uh, if we consider the average reservoir pressure is higher than the saturation or bubble point pressure, so in this case, uh, RB equals RSO uh, initial or RSO. If we uh, in Jerusalem, yes. Uh, so we have uh, to end maybe in ten minutes maximum. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, second, uh, we have uh, no gas production, so GB equals zero, no water production, WB equals zero, no initial gas cap, M equals zero, no water influx, WE equals zero. So the simplest form is the material balance equation with global equals expansion. As you can see, so the recovery factor will be in NB over N and function of uh, oil formation volume factor. Due to the complexity of the uh, material balance equation presented in 1941, in 1964, uh, Havlina and Oda presented uh, straight line forms of the material balance by rearranging the general form to present 
the uh, equivalent equation of a state based on the polarity mechanism. This is the uh, general uh, straight line from the material balance. We have uh, F, which is representing production, and the right hand, the right -hand side is the uh, expansion of oil, water, and gas. So this is the uh, general straight line form, as you can see. With the uh, similar assumption for depletion drive reservoir, M equals zero, WE equals zero, no water influx. So this is the simplest form of the straight line material balance equation. So if we plot F uh, versus E or our expansion of oil, so as you can see, we will have a straight line for straight line relationship. The slope will be uh, N or stoib uh, and intercept will be uh, zero. So this relationship will pass through the origin of the uh, relationship. In the case of water uh, influx, we have WE. So this is the general uh, straight line form. Uh, as you can see, uh, simplified to this form. So if we plot uh, this F over EE versus WE over EE. So this is a straight line relationship. Using this relationship, we can identify N, which is Y intercept, as you can see, and identify water influx from uh, uh, if we have ion slope straight line. Applications of IBM in that software for reserve estimation. After defining the uh, reservoir model, we have two different approaches for uh, history matching in Imbel. The first one is the analytical approach is to match the uh, tank pressure versus fume production using uh, regression analysis. Second is the graphical approach by using different diagnostic plots to validate, uh, validate the results. This is a field example for uh, oil reservoir. We have, uh, we have no initial gas cap or uh, water influx. So uh, we have this relationship F uh, equals N uh, times ET. So this is a straight line relationship. The slope will be uh, N or original oil in place, as you can see. If we have uh, this another field example, we have oil reservoir where uh, we have uncertainty for the uh, water aquifer. Uh, as you can see, this is the uh, graphical uh, approach, uh, tank pressure versus fume production. As you can see, uh, the data is uh, shows a good matching using the uh, model using uh, water uh, influx. And using graphical approach, we have a good matching using this straight line of F minus WE versus uh, ET. As you can see, the slope of this straight line will be in or, uh, oil in place. Dynamic of flowing material balance is another technique of material balance analysis. Uh, this technique is uh, very important because we, uh, we can use material balance during the uh, production phase uh, because the conventional material balance uh, it's recommended to shorten uh, the your wells at several points during the production to get accurate estimation of the average reservoir pressure. So flowing material balance, we, uh, we have no uh, type curves. But the uh, assumption for this approach, we have to have a boundary limit flow or so speed state flow conditions. The, uh, one of the principal parameters for uh, flowing material balance is the material balance time. Simply, it's uh, a parameter to convert the flowing, uh, the variable flow rate conditions to equivalent constant rate conditions. Simply during production, the flow rate is variable. As you can see, the flow rate is uh, decreasing with time. Uh, this is a flow rate versus actual time. While if we uh, use material balance time, we will convert this 
define a redefine solution to an equivalent constant differential solution and the definition of material balance time as we can see is nb over q or rate normalized differential q this is for uh, oil the main principle of the flowing material balance is the uh, definition of the compressibility, uh, isothermal compressibility from this definition. Uh, the change of volume with pressure was respect to the initial volume. The initial volume, as you know, is the uh, N or storage. So we can, uh, we will get this relationship uh, for uh, flowing material balance, we have two uh, different pressure losses during the production operations. Pressure loss due to depletion and the pressure loss due to inflow. So uh, the first, uh, the procedure for analysis using flowing material balance is to plot delta B over Q versus time. Uh, and this, uh, using this plot, you will find this parameter, which is a pseudo still stays constant. As you can see, it's the y intercept of this plot. This constant will be used to calculate the average reservoir pressure as a function of uh, flowing pressure and oil rate. And finally, uh, to get the uh, oil in place, you have to plot uh, Q over delta B versus this term on x-axis, the x-axis intercept will be in or original oil in place. This unfilled example of uh, production of uh, an oil well, we have oil rate versus time and the flowing pressure versus time. The first is to plot uh, delta B over Q versus this uh, versus material balance time to get the uh, pseudo steel state constant this term. After that, calculate the average reservoir pressure using this equation. And finally, using this uh, plot, you will get uh, the value of N, of uh, which is the x-axis intercept. In this field example, N is estimated to be more or less 55 uh, million stock tank value. The last, uh, I, uh, last uh, approach here in this webinar is rate transient analysis or RTA. Uh, RTA is typically uh, an extension of the uh, pressure transient analysis uh, DTA. Uh, it's typically an uh, analytical approach that uses uh, Darcy's law equation of state and continuity equation to develop partial differential equation that solve it analytically to uh, applications of RTA reservoir characteristics like permeability and reserve. Applications of Kava Tobias software, uh, Tobias is typically one of the modules of Kava orchestration. Uh, we can uh, use the software, we can use production data to analyze our reservoir and calculate reserve. Typical analysis tools available in Tobias software as you can see, we have which type curve like O of M, uh, log log plot to beach plot, and normalized rate QM plot. This is a log log plot. Uh, we have uh, log log uh, plot of uh, delta V over Q versus material balance time. We have uh, pressure integral versus, versus time and the pressure integral derivative versus time. What's important to know in this uh, plot, uh, you will have a straight line during the boundary dominated flow. So using uh, this straight line, we can calculate our reserve or storage in addition to the uh, determination of reservoir characteristics like the mobility, flow regimes, and uh, skin factor. Normalized rate cum plot, uh, it's a relationship, this relationship. This plot is used to uh, to get the value of N at uh, X axis intercept. And this is a bit of which type curve like O of M. In addition, uh, this curve contains the Q cumulative curve that's not available in O of M software. 
This is the uh, field example of the flow uh, rate transient analysis. As you can see, we have flowing pressure versus time and the flow rate versus time. In Tobias, we uh, have defined the reservoir parameters. As you can see, uh, after that, we have loaded the production data, uh, production rate, and the flowing pressure, like this. And select a specific model to match the data. Uh, as you can see, this is the log log plot. Uh, in the results, in this legend, we have n or a story, uh, about 24 million per 10 kilowatt. And using normalized rate cumulative plot, we have n uh, similarly uh, with a near uh, value about uh, 23, 23 uh, million per 10 kilowatt. This is generated using Kabatobas software. So uh, right now, uh, it's our conclusion of this webinar. BRMS is the oil and gas industry global standard for reserve and resources classifications and reporting. BRMS classifications are reserves contingent resources and prospective resources. The reserves must satisfy four criteria discovered, must be discovered, recoverable, commercial, and remaining. The unproved reserves are classified as probable and possible reserves. The uh, volumetric equation is the basic equation for uh, the calculations of uh, oil in place and oil reserve. Our equation or uh, the conventional decline analysis approach is uh, widely used and simple equation to uh, calculate reserve and identify the estimated ultimate recovery. The coverage are used to analyze both transient and boundary dominated flow periods. The material balance equation is a zero-dimensional analytical model that used to calculate reserve and identify water influx parameters. Uh, flowing material balance is uh, a good approach uh, that provides an easy and effective way for estimating uh, reserve and oil inputs. And finally, RTE or rate transient analysis is an extension of the pressure transient analysis used to characterize the reservoir and calculate uh, oil reserve or scribe. Okay, thank you so much. That's all I have in this uh, webinar. Thank you for all of you for joining me in this session. And right now, uh, feel free to ask any questions. Go ahead. Okay, Jad. Jad? Yes, I'm here. So thank you, Engineer Sham, for this uh, great webinar. Uh, right now, my colleague Omar will share uh, on the chat a feedback form, so we, uh, we can always fulfill your needs. So if you can, uh, please, everyone, take a look on the form and fill it. Also, please share your questions with us on the questions and answers uh, section. Okay. And I will read the questions for you, Engineer Hisham. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the first question is, what are the reasons if volumetric reserves and reserves from the dynamic data are not in agreement with each other? Uh, volumetric data is uh, typically considered uh, we have uh, uh, a more uniform reservoir characteristics, uh, but in reality, we may have changes in reservoir characteristics. Uh, uh, with area, we may have changes in the reservoir structure. Uh, but uh, the uh, dynamic data is uh, typically uh, most important and more accurate than the volumetric, uh, because in, in dynamic uh, or wild production, the uh, concept of pressure transient will uh, will consider the area connected or the connected volume with our reservoir while production and ignore any separated volumes any separated uh, areas beyond this uh, this connected volume 
So uh, the uh, dynamic of flowing calculations is uh, typically uh, more accurate and typically less than the volumetric calculations. Okay. So we have another question saying the well estimation is usually done during exploration stage. What happens if the reservoir estimation data does not correspond with the reservoir volume in future? Uh, typically, uh, in, in the future, we may have different operating conditions, different flowing, different uh, flowing conditions. We have different parameters that uh, will change the production profile with time, like uh, development operation, drilling work over, and so on. Any depletion, in, uh, any decrease in bottom hole flowing pressure, the corresponding or the expected flow rates will be less than expected because the reservoir energy is lower than expected. In this case, we have to start additional uh, programs like uh, secondary or tertiary recovery to uh, enhance the, <clears throat> the production and get the ultimate recovery. Okay, we have another question. Uh, what is meant? Okay, wait. Let's okay, go, go ahead. Huh? Uh, yes. What's the difference between probable and possible reserves and resources? Uh, the term resources is a general term for all quantities of hydrocarbon we have in the subsurface reservoirs uh, may be discovered uh, or undiscovered, uh, conventional or unconventional, and so on. So the term resources is a, a very general uh, term for all uh, resources we have. But the uh, uh, possible reserves or uh, probable reserves or even the proved reserves are classifications of the uh, reserve which is uh, discovered, remaining, and commercial. They are, must be commercial. The uh, proved, as mentioned during the webinar, uh, we must have uh, production data or testing data. We have uh, existing wells, while for uh, the Bruno uh, uh, Reserve, we have uh, areas beyond the beyond uh, the approved area, or uh, higher structure, higher structure than the approved area. For the possible uh, Reserve, any area beyond the uh, the approvable uh, area, or any structure lower than the approved. Uh, Area, this will be uh, classified as probable reserves, or uh, classified as possible reserves. Okay, uh, we have a question uh, asking about the de definition about the uh, open perforation. Open perforation means we have a uh, uh, perforated interval, open, uh, open uh, we have, uh, which means we have no restriction for production, open, it's ready for uh, production. Uh, in case of we have uh, wells waiting and installing production facilities, but the, we have perforated this well. So the perforation uh, in the uh, bottom hole reservoir is uh, open, but we are uh, we are, have closed this well at the well head waiting the installation of uh, production or uh, processing facilities and so on. So open perforation is we have a, a, a current uh, perforation or perforated interval uh, ready for starting production from the wellhead. Okay, so thank you, Anjali Sham. I wish uh, everyone that we can read all your questions, but uh, we ran out of time. So thank you, everyone, and thank you again, Anjali Sham. Please all make sure to fill the feedback form again. Okay, thank and, you so much. Uh, the meeting. Uh, will end right now. Thank you, Engineer Hisham, for your efforts and for this great webinar.